an overwhelmed immigration system, a court ruling to keep Donald Trump off the ballot, and new details about his efforts to overturn the last election. To discuss it all, we turn now to the analysis of Brooks and Capehart. That is New York Times columnist David Brooks and Jonathan Capehart, associate editor for The Washington Post. Good to see you both. Good to see you. So we are seeing record daily encounters at the U.S. southern border once again. Senate went home without a deal of border policy wrapped up with foreign aid funding. In the meantime, immigration as an issue, as a concern for Americans, has been rising. In some recent polling by Gallup, you see when people are asked what they think the most important problem the country is facing right now, the top one is government and poor leadership at 19 percent, immigration is second at 15 percent, followed by the economy and inflation. Jonathan, the negotiators from the Senate who went home still have a chance to continue talking. Do you see them getting anything done? In the spirit of Christmas, I want to say yes. <laughs> but by the time they get something done, Christmas will have come and gone. And so, look, uh, this much I know, they are trying. They are trying very hard. This much I also know. If they do indeed come up with a deal, it's going to be a deal that folks in the far right are going to hate because it doesn't go far enough from their perspective. And those um, on, the, uh, on the left and within the Democratic Party, their hair is going to be on fire because it pro probably will go too far. But because it is attached to aid to Ukraine and Israel and, and Taiwan, the imperative to getting this done is so high that I think the negotiators are going to come up with a bill that is going to require a lot of people on both sides of the aisle to swallow a bitter pill if they want to get this done. You agree with that? Yeah, I, th I think we're closer to some sort of bipartisan immigration bill than we've been since the Bush administration. Hmm. Uh, ju just a lot of people have a lot they need from this bill. Uh, the Biden administration is now just way behind in immigration. The Biden was, you know, slightly behind in immigration in 2020. Now he's like 30 points behind among immigrants themselves, people who personally came over to this country. Biden had a 20 point lead among immigrants now. Now it's even with Trump. And so the political pressure is just awesome. And then you look at Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell, Kristen Sinema, everyone is sort of saying the right things. And of course, the details are the details, the immigration issue being what it is. But I just think so many different constituencies get something out of this that I think it's, I don't know if more likely than not, but more than we've seen in decades. The cynical view here is the longer it's a problem, the more Republicans can leverage it and say it's Biden's problem and not want to fix it. Do you see any truth to that? Yeah. Well, obviously, there's some truth to having an issue. But uh, I think for Kirsten Cinema, people like that, for, if you look at the individual senators or the individual House members, and you look at how people are reacting on the border, where they go to the grocery store and there's no food because they've been swamped, they can't get into the ER. Like, people are having real difficulties on the border in these towns that are overwhelmed. Uh, to me, those people are not looking for an issue. Those are looking for some help. Oh, uh, uh, and I, I agree with you on that. But let's talk about even uh, more cynical view, and that is Republican governors sending migrants from their states to northern cities, to cities that are run by Democratic mayors and thus using immigrants um, and using human beings for political purposes, using them as pawns in, in their political games. And I think that's also why we see concern about immigration um, rising up to the top, in, including in places like New York City, which, you know, Republicans like to deride it as, well, you're a sanctuary city, well, you should take care of this. But it, it, in order for those things to work, it, things need to work at the border. And so this is a problem that is not one of President Biden's making. To your point, this is some, we haven't been this close to an immigration deal since President George W. Bush, the Republican, but this is something that has bedeviled both Republican and Democratic presidents simply because the incentives have not really been there to do anything about it. And we cannot say enough. Nothing changes substantially at the border until Congress acts. We have right. to underscore that, too. Meanwhile, all of these forces have allowed former President Trump to really double down on a lot of the anti-immigrant messaging he has been employing. He's been echoing Nazi propaganda by repeatedly saying immigrants are, quote, poisoning the blood of our country. We've got just over three weeks to go before the Iowa caucuses, and I need to point out that that language is actually resonating among likely GOP caucus goers. Take a look at this latest poll from the Des Moines Register and NBC in Iowa. They found 42 percent say those comments actually make them more likely to vote for former President Trump. Jonathan, what do you make of that? I'm not surprised by that at all. It takes me back to the 2016 campaign 
when there were a lot of stories that quoted people who went to his rallies. Why do you like Donald Trump? He says what we're all thinking. He says what I can't say. And it left me to wonder, well, what can't you say? Um, he's called Mexicans rapists. He's called for a Muslim ban. This was during his campaign. Now, he's been, he was president for four years. So we know what his thinking is. And in these rallies where he talks about immigrants, um, he, he, in talking about poisoning the blood of our country, and he spells out they're coming from Africa, they're coming from Asia, they're coming from South America. What he doesn't say is they're coming from Europe. For him, immigrants are people who come from anywhere that's basically black or brown. And let's not forget um, what he said when he was president of the United States, how he derided uh, immigrants from country, from quote unquote, s-hole countries. So we know what his viewpoint is. And so the fact that he is using this, the, I was about to say, this Hitler-esque uh, language, we should take that very seriously. He's saying it over and over and over again. And it is, ter it is terrible for political discourse. It is terrible for a country that is you know, built by immigrants and, and enslaved labor. David. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought the comments were abhorrent and horrible. And Donald Trump has a talent for te tapping into some of the darker uh, underground rivers of American history. America first, nativism, no nothingism. And this is an example. But we shouldn't ignore the fact, this statistic I said a couple of minutes ago, which is that his support among immigrants themselves is surging. And so there's an actual issue here. And so um, in my view, any time he talks about immigrants, he's probably going to get, he, you're going to get that 42% number. And then you've got to remember 42% at least of Iowan uh, Republican caucus goers are, are Trump supporters. So they're going to be pro-Trump no matter what when a reporter comes up. So A, I think it's, it's abhorrent. But we shouldn't reduce the whole issue to those abhorrent comments, those Nazi-like comments, that there actually is a core problem here that people are really resonating with. I do want to get you both to weigh in on the issue out of Colorado as well, the Supreme Court there weighing in and basically saying uh, Mr. Trump is not eligible to appear on their primary ballot, uh, citing the insurrection clause of the 14th Amendment. You know, there's similar legal efforts underway in a number of states, so this is likely headed for the Supreme Court. But, Jonathan, is this an issue that you think the courts should be deciding or, or the voters? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, in the short term, yes, I think it, this is an issue that the voters should decide because, one, the guy is, le at least right now, leading in the polls. He is on his way, pos quite possibly, to become the next Republican nominee, and we're less than a year out, so the voters w should have a say in this. At the, at the same time, I say yes, that the courts should have a say because this is a question that has not been tested yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, even though the framers foresaw a Trump-like character coming, coming, at least trying to come into power in American politics, that person has never tested the system the way Donald Trump has. The system has never been required to answer the question until now. And so I think just for the good of the country, let's have this conversation. These two things can happen at the same time. You agree with that, David? No. <laughs> no. 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 What should happen? Yeah, well, here? why is Donald Trump, why did he become president? Why are there populist movements across every Western country? It's because a lot of people in a lot of these countries, me included, think a highly educated cohort of, in this case, Americans, have created a, a hereditary, meritocratic class. They have, too much, they have a lot of education. They now have a lot of cultural power. They control the media. They control the universities. They increasingly control the courts. And a lot of Americans say they have too much power. We're going to be populist. We're going to have an uprising. And then you have a, supreme, you have a series of judges with their Ivy League law degrees who come in and say, sorry, we're taking your guy off the ballot. That would explode this country. And in my view, explode it under the most dubious possible circumstances. For kicking off for the Insurrection Act, has he been convicted of, the, of offending the Insurrection Act? Has he been even charged with violating the Insurrection Act? No. Uh, and so to me, it would look like, and I think would be, uh, just an elite power grab to deny people their democratic rights. I assume the Supreme Court will throw this out anyway, but that's my view. And we should point out there's divergence among uh, opinions, even for those who, don't, who believe that he should not be uh, president, is unfit to be president. So I'm sure it's, it's something we're going to continue to cover. You have a quick point to yes, make? Yes, yes, yes. please. The, the quick yeah. point. Let's remember that the Colorado case has been brought by Republicans. Just make that Worth clear. Worth noting. Thank you for that. Uh, look. 
we are heading into Christmas weekend, and you both dig into some of the toughest issues of our time, which we so appreciate every week, but it is the season of peace, goodwill towards men and women, also the season of hope. I, I need to ask you both, what is it that gives you hope in this moment? Oh, I was gonna go to David first, but I'd be like, <laughs> no, for, for me, and I mean this in all, in all sincerity, the American electorate give me hope. Um, I, I know that there's some folks who, don't, who might not agree with that, but the American electorate in 2022 during the midterm elec elections, they showed us that they, they are nuanced and sophisticated and can walk and chew gum at the same time. They might not like the economy, but they don't like what Republicans had in store for the country and they blunted the red wave. It is my sincere hope that the American electorate one year from now will have saved American democracy, will have saved the idea of democracy for the rest of the world. That is my hope. David. Candy canes, dancing Santas, you know the dancing Santa in the Target? The, how can you not be hopeful when you got like Santas swinging their hips around? So I, I'm, I'm just filled with ecstatic exuberance. <laughs> I did not think this was going to end with you imitating a dancing fan. For that, I am grateful. David Brooks, Jonathan Capehart, thank you so much. Thanks, Emma.